have seen in the previous sessions both nature and nurture having a big role to play in the physical and personality development of the child a child social emotional development is as important as his brain and physical development it is his desire to connect with others that motivates him to learn his sense of who he is in the world deeply impacts how much and how well he learns as well as the quality of the relationships he builds with others a child who does not have a secure and caring relationship with his family in the early years may develop personality disorders in later years infant and early childhood's mental health includes a full spectrum of social and emotional functioning this ranges from the ability to form satisfying relationships with others play communicate learn express emotions and to the disorders of very early childhood students today we will be discussing the various factors that influence the personality of the child that relate to the child's role in the family which are important for his or her personality development parenting behavior and infant development mothers with higher level of education and greater family income interacted more with their children engaged their children in more outside activities and provided more stimulation and teaching in the home environment parenting behavior was related to child developmental outcomes in the following ways the frequency of mother child interactions was significantly related to higher scores of children's future fine and gross motor development a more stimulating home environment was significantly related to higher scores on children's concurrent social fine and gross motor development the greater use of outside activities was significantly related to higher scores for children's concurrent and future social and fine motor development in general a more engaged parenting style has benefits for children's development but different aspects of parenting behavior have different effects in general a more engaged parenting style has benefits for children's development but different aspects of parenting behavior have different effects while some appear to have immediate impact the positive effects of others such as the general level of mother child interactions only show themselves over a period of time therefore techniques that encourage continuous engagement may prove to be more successful than those that focus on isolated incidents of engaged parenting There are important differences in parenting behavior and its relationship to the child development across socio-economic groups. In particular, mothers who have more education provide more interactive parenting both inside and outside the home than their contemporaries with less education. A good level of education is therefore not only important for the individual but also for the family. In a research on yearly neural behavior in children it was found that most parenting domains were related with cognitive development parent child closeness emerged as the most predictive greater parent child closeness was also associated with greater social emotional competence parenting was positive warm and sensitive led to better personality development parents who displayed higher levels of negative effort were more likely to rate their children as withdrawn anxious and inhibited in the same research specific parenting behaviors particularly parent child closeness was associated with neuro behavioral development these findings have implications for the development of targeted parent based interventions to promote positive outcomes across different developmental domains during the first 2 years of life for every preterm children we should encourage continuous engaged parenting from infancy to early childhood and focus on 
increasing parental engagement in early infancy the family as a social system when we look into the area of the family as a social system we see that parents influence children and children also influence behavior of their parents families are networks of reciprocal relationships we also see that happily married mothers are more likely to have securely attached children children do best when couples co-parent and both parents are involved in the parenting of course the marital relationship may affect the parenting that the infant receives the infant's behavior and so on clearly families are complex social systems families are also developing systems where developmental change occurs within the family system the family changes with the development of the family members growth within the family is therefore dynamic and irreversible families are also embedded within larger cultural and subcultural contexts this affects how family functions are carried out for example socialization of children in india is different from socialization in western countries in india infants live with their parents they are very close to their mother and family members the number of extended family is large and the social relationship are governed by tradition and respect all these differences will have an effect on the development of child's personality children will grow up to have personalities similar to their parents and those that are acceptable in the societies they grow up in in india there are two types of families in today's society nuclear family with the breed winning father a housewife mother and at least two children is a stereotype families as social system include dual carrier single parent blended and multi generational families multi generational families or the traditional way of raising children this setup was very good for language and personality development of children in the early years since the child always had somebody to care of them this system is now slowly disappearing in india we find that collectivistic cultures like indian culture tend to stress on maintaining close ties to relatives strong respect for authority proper and polite behaviors direct and indirect influence of family on the personality development there are two major dimensions of parenting parental acceptance or responsiveness which includes the amount of support and affection which is associated with secure attachment parental demanding or control this relates to the amount of regulation or supervision and the degree of regulation tied to parental acceptance two major dimensions of parenting based on macobi and martin when we cross the two dimensions we come up with four parenting styles there are four patterns of parenting authoritarian here the parents are very restrictive expects obedience and does not explain why limit exists such parents raise children with less favorable developmental outcomes authoritative here parents are controlling but flexible make reasonable demands provide reasons for limits parents are rational and democratic such parents tend to raise highly competent well adjusted children permissive such parents are accepting and make few demands they do very little monitoring and end up raising children with less favorable developmental outcomes and involved such parents are extremely undemanding they may have rejected their children because they cannot devote energy to child rearing they raise children who are aggressive selfish and rebellious and perform poorly in the school in general when we analyze behavioral control versus psychological control we see that firm behavioral control tends to lead to well behaved children but when there is psychological control it may be like guilt shame or withholding affection lead to poor developmental outcomes the other major influence on child development within the family is the influence of siblings yeah sure there are usually changes in the family system when a new baby arrives 
the mother devotes less warmth and playful attention to the older child and the older child may become disruptive and so sibling rivalry often develops when we look at sibling relationships over the course of childhood we find that there is fairly quick adjustment to new sibling while conflict is normal it decreases within a few days or weeks sibling rivalry is less if parents get along and monitor children's activities personality differences among children of the same family why is that even though siblings share very similar genes and environment their personalities is so different a researcher named robert plomin sought to find the answer when performing a study on siblings he saw that siblings differ to some extent but they were much more similar in physical appearance and cognitive abilities on average than when compared to the children picked at random from the population when it came to the personality however siblings only similar to each other about 20% of the time there are three major theories as to why this is the case first in the case it may be explained by divergence divergence is a concept discovered by darwin whose role is basically to minimize competition so it's not direct and that leads to specialization in different areas according to the frank solovi children in a family are competing against each other consciously or unconsciously for the time love and attention of their parents therefore if one child surpasses the other in sports then the other sibling will try to excel in another area such as academics in order to avoid direct competition these circumstances lead to differences in personalities between siblings coming to the another explanation for this phenomenon may be what is called the non shared environment theory this theory suggests that although siblings are growing up in same biological family they are not having the same experiences due to the age differences it is as if they are growing up in completely different environments lastly this may be explained by the comparison theory which proposes that families are essentially comparison machines that greatly exaggerate even minor differences between siblings a very interesting explanation is put forth by susan mchale a researcher at pennsylvania state university imagine two friendly children born in the one family one of his children is incredibly extroverted and the other is just very sociable in the context of any other family the second child would be considered an extrovert but in this family she is the introvert because of this label the second child chooses different friends and activities making this child different in personality from her siblings from the above three theories we can see how the personality of the child develops within the family and how different factors may be operating on child within the same family birth order is often considered to be important in the manner in which children are treated within the family especially in a tradition bound society like india the elder son or the elder daughter may have more traditional roles and authority within the family when compared to the younger ones thus an older child will develop a more authoritative personality while the younger one or free from responsibilities from a very young age and may develop more balanced personalities theory of infant temperament temperament is defined as the part of the personality which is genetically based temperament refers to stable yearly appearing individual differences in behavior for example some children cry easily while others seem more relaxed some babies are more active while others are more sedentary temperament can be modified by environmental factors and maturation which alter the ways a child's personality is expressed students let us now look at the question of how is temperament created where do these personality characteristics come from the two designs used most frequently by genetics to unravel genetic and environmental influences in infant 
and child temperament or twin studies and studies of adopted children when studying twins researchers compare monozygotic twins who are genetically identical with dizygotic twins who are only share 50% of their genes if temperament is based on genetics these studies should show that the monozygotic twins are more similar than the dizygotic twins they also examine differences between monozygotic twins which can only be due to environmental factors many twin studies have proved evidence that there is strong genetic influence on infant personality studies shown the monozygotic twins are more similar than dizygotic twins across many different impairment dimensions including emotionality activity shyness and sociability adoption studies have also found genetic influences across temperament the problem in these studies is that they are quantitative in nature which means that they provide strong evidence that shows how important genes are in creating the child's personality but they do not identify specific genes responsible recent advances in molecular genetics techniques may mean that we will soon be able to identify some genes associated with personality these triads are unlikely to be major genes which segregate in a simple way now that we have some idea where these triads come from it is logical to wonder how we can change them how much influence do our genes have on the persons we become and the question is how much control do we have over our behavior while it is true that our environment does plays a large role in creating our personality our underlying temperament is always a part of us attachment theory provides a framework for understanding emotional reactions in infants by linking infant and parent in a paired set attachment is an instructional need to connect with other human beings attachment may function as a regulator between infant temperament and outside environmental influences it is possible that good parenting can change a child's basic temperament by helping them to regulate their emotional and behavioral urges in a positive way there is increasing evidence that the biological makeup of children can be altered by early and even prenatal experience this modern development is very much in lines with our traditional indian belief of the influence of prenatal experiences on children for centuries indian women believed that whatever they read write and experience during their pregnancy will be beneficial in influencing child's personality this has now been found out by modern science also and shows parents and educators a way to influence the child's temperament conclusion psychologists have debated for many years over whether nature or nurture plays a more important role in determining or causing individual differences in personality and behavior historically most people have supported the idea that nature is the larger factor in determining personality some psychologists even supported the idea of tabula rasa or the blank slate which states that humans acquire all or almost all of their behavioral traits from nurture most modern psychological researchers now believe that both biological and environmental factors interact to form a child's personality of this the influence of the family on the formation of the right personality is quite important we have looked at the importance of parenting and the importance of sibling relations within the family for proper personality development it should be also stressed that the experiences of the infant within the family in its prenatal as well as infant years that is from 0 to 3 are really very vital in determining its personality for the rest of the life therefore it is very essential that these experiences are positive and healthy in india 
Traditionally, a lot of importance was given for prenatal and infant experiences and there are a lot of traditions regarding this. However, many of these beliefs and practices have been forgotten due to increasing modernization within the Indian families. While dealing with infants, it is quite important to learn from both tradition and science to secure the best possible experience that will contribute to the well-rounded personality of the child so that he or she may live a very well-adjusted life.